Good morning students. I am Dr. Pradeep Johnson, professor in the Department of Mechatronics Engineering. I am going to share a brief introduction about metal forming process. So what do you understand by the word metal forming? It is defined as a large group of manufacturing process in which plastic deformation is used to change the shape of metal work pieces. The tool is usually called as a die and it applies stresses that exceed the yield strength of the metal and the metal takes a shape determined by the geometry of the die. So what are the stresses that normally act in the metal forming process? One is a tensile stress, the other one is tensile and compressive and then shear spinning. So what are the metal properties needed in metal forming? So these are some of the desired metal properties like low yield strength and high ductility. And also these properties are affected by temperature. As you can see that ductility increases and yield strength decreases when work temperature is raised. So other factors that contribute to metal forming is strain rate and friction. So moving on to some of the basic types of deformation process. The number one is bulk deformation. Under that category, there are rolling, forging, extrusion, wire, and bar drawing. The other one is sheet metalworking, and under that category is bending, deep drawing, and cutting. So, what do you mean by bulk deformation process? It is nothing but a significant deformation that massively changes the shape of the components. Moving on to the next one, the first category under forming process is rolling. So where you can see this is a bulk deformation process, you can see a workpiece that is inserted between two rollers and the output is the diameter of the rollers. And this is again another example of a bulk deformation process known as forging where you can see there are two die and inside the die is kept a workpiece and upon applying the pressure, the workpiece takes the shape of the die. And this is the extrusion process where we use a ram to push the workpiece inside a die and you get the output. And this is a wire and bar drawing which is similar to the previous one where we insert the workpiece through a die and uh, it takes the shape of the die output. So what is the sheet metal working? So here we can see it is also known as press working because we perform some press operations during this sheet metal working. So these sheet metal working are normally used in automobile industries for stamping purposes. Parts are called stampings. And the tooling normally used is punch and die. So this is a basic sheet metal operation which shows the sheet metal bending where you can see the die upon which the workpiece is placed and upon applying pressure using a punch we can see the deformation that is taking place and the workpiece takes the shape of the die. And the other one example of sheet metal working is deep drawing. Where you can see a die and upon which a workpiece is placed and there are two blank holders and we use a punch and we apply pressure using the punch and the workpiece extends. So this is known as a deep drawing process. The next type is shearing operation. So shearing of sheet metal. Where you can see there are there's a die and we place the workpiece on the die and we apply a punch on the workpiece so that it shares or cuts the sheet metal. So now moving on to the next important category is about the temperature that is involved in metal forming process. So there are three temperature ranges in metal forming normally cold working, warm working and hot working. So cold working is nothing but that is the operation that is performed at room temperature or slightly above. So what are the advantages of cold working? You have better accuracy, closer 
tolerance, better surface finish, strain hardening increasing strength and hardness, no heating of work required, and some of the disadvantages are higher forces and power required in the deformation process, ductility and strain hardening limit the amount of forming that can be done, and in some cases the metal must be annealed to allow further deformation. And in certain cases, metal is simple but not ductile enough to be cold work. The second category is warm working. So this is naturally performed at temperature above room temperature, but it is below recrystallization temperature. So normally it is expressed in the terms of 0 0.3 to the T power M, where Tm is the melting point or the absolute temperature for metal. And advantages of warm working are lower forces and power than in cold working. And we can uh, use more intricate geometries and the lesser need for annealing and also low spring back. And some of the disadvantages are scaling of a part surface. And moving on to the third type, hot working. Deformation at temperatures above the recrystallization temperature is known as hot working. So it is normally performed above 0 0.6 Tm. And the metal conditions soften as temperature increase above 0 point into Tm. So therefore enhancing the advantage of hot working above this level. So why we need hot working? Capability of sustainable plastic deformation and strength coefficient is substantially less than at room temperature. So some of the advantages of hot working are work part shape can be significantly altered, lower force and power required, metals that usually fracture in cold working can be hot formed, strength properties properly general isotropic, no work hardening occurs during forming. And some of the disadvantages are lower dimensional accuracy in case of bulk forming, high total energy required, and work surface oxidation and also cast order tool life. Thank you.